get it right there. Ah! Your putt. <laughs> bar, nice bar. Yeah. I don't swear on the golf course, but I do make animal noises when I miss on the green. Meet Lee and Jake Schoenbeck, a father and son duo who spent the summer of 2010 golfing every public and private golf course in South Dakota. I used to golf some and then I kind of got too busy with kids and then Jake started golfing about maybe two years ago, three years ago. Three years, yeah. And so then I pretty much the only time I golfed is when he and I would go out. And then we saw this magazine said Golf South Dakota that uh, the Farmer Tourism put out. And so we talked about it in the winter and said, you know, it'd be kind of fun to try that. Although I don't like him that much. <laughs> um, the, yeah. Things mutual. We'd start with our home course first. Then we go after school every day, play a few courses just around our town. And so we started. What we tried to do was we played in the northeast region where we could get them just going out after school. Uh, and the idea we had that seemed kind of crazy at first, we lined up about three days and see if we could play like five courses a day. And we, so we'd map out a course on the map. And we did that whole swing and played about 20 some courses in about three days. And then after we did that, then we pretty much figured we could yeah. we could nail it. Generally speaking, we did. This was our first trip. Yeah. That was our second trip. Yeah. This was our third trip. And then this was like four, five, and six because of the flooding. Lee and Jake would kick off their expedition in early April in hopes of finishing on Labor Day. What the show and Bex did not expect was Mother Nature's attempt to throw their plan off course. We canceled trips because of flooding. Well, I mean, we'd go home because there's nothing to golf. The, the flooding was the biggest thing. We were down in the southeast part of the state. We were kind of doing it by regions, which was a mistake. If I was doing it again, I'd leave a few around in different places so you could cover the weather. Delmont has the best drainage in the state of South Dakota. There is no other course with a seven inch rain that you could go out five minutes later and play. Corsica, Corsica, Corsica. I have a great picture of that one. It caught us. We there. were on hole number three and all of a sudden just down for us. We're on the opposite side of the fairway. He's taking pictures of I took of a us. picture of it. You can see the rain falling. He's under a tree and I'm under a tree, just pouring rain. Oh, there you go. Nice drive. It was soon realized this journey was a once in a lifetime adventure that both golfers would never forget. Lee began keeping a journal while Jake quickly began to keep track of his favorite courses. Sutton Bay, which is that really private famous course, uh, Hot Springs, the nicest public course, and Elkhorn Ridge, the nicest nine hole course. We always say the most beautiful hole in South Dakota is number 11 at Hot Springs. I had him with me there the year before, and when he walked down the tee box, he looks out and goes, wow, Dad, this is like the PGA. There were also courses that made their not-so-favorite list, and a few they could barely find. Eagle Butte. Eagle Butte. Find. <laughs> you couldn't well, find you, you didn't, we couldn't find it when we got there, and we couldn't find it on our way there, because the course was just barely anything. They hadn't mowed it. And so you couldn't tell where the fairways were, and there was no scorecard with a map like they all do. And so we park, and we're out about five miles from Eagle Butte, and there's this, looks like it's the course. And uh, flags. there was a kind of a mound, and so we thought, well, that must be the first tee box. So we teed off. And when we finally got to the green, we put the flag up at sand green. It said number three. And I like that. The course that was, I think, kind of trickiest to find, though, would be like Timberlake. Yeah, that's pretty out there. Course wasn't really marked well, but people told us how to get there. And instead of having, when you actually got to it, I don't even think it says the golf course, but there were tires that said no hunting hanging on the fence posts. And we kind of had directions, and we got there, and there was a course. Nice course. You know, and then there's another 20 courses. Yeah. I, I like Sisseton. I like Millbank. Fair uh, green. Bowdle has got the nicest fairway grass in the state of South Dakota. Corsica. Corsica. In fact, they, did, they had a, a tee box in the shape of a breast cancer um, ribbon. And that was all astroturf. The, the, the greens were and the tee boxes. The two would also notice the beauty of South Dakota's diverse landscape. Everything from the wettest land down in uh, Yankton area, in that area, to uh, cactus. We, I've hit off, I hit off cactus at least once or twice. And there's grasshoppers everywhere out in that oh, area. Murdo. Oh, and uh, Kadoka. You'd step and Hunter would fly up every step. But we walked across an airport at Kadoka because the golf course plays around an airport. 
on the air, really on the uh, airport. It is really on the airport because it's a, it's like a it's a grass air, um, airport and you just walk across it after hole number three. And on the scorecard it says this is an active runway. Look up for airplanes. Both Jake and Lee agree it was a great way for a father and son to spend their summer. Their trips back and forth across the state produced more than an improved golf game. It produced priceless memories. You don't have to really be um, very good at golf to I mean, do what we did or to enjoy golfing. I mean, I don't think enjoying golf is, is about being a scratch golfer or something. I think if you do that, you don't have much time for the rest of your life. you got to practice too much. Way short. But I tell you what, the most common thing you get, and I still, all the time, every week, this summer around uh, guys who will say, God, I'd like to do that. And, I, you know, when we did it, we didn't. It just kind of started out like, wow, look at this book. This looks kind of interesting. And um, we didn't think it was any big deal. I didn't think of it as a father-son deal. I just thought Jake and I are going to go play a little golf. Nice, Jake, nice.